ومن الأمور أيضا مهمة خصوصا في وضع من يعيش في بلاد الكفر ولي الأمر بشرطه أن يكون مسلما وأما الكفار فلا ولاية للمسلمين عليه ولكن هذا كما ذكر أهل العلم لا يعني الفوضى ولا يعني المظاهرات ولا يعني عدم الطاعة فيما ليس في معصية لأن هذا يدخل في اعتبارات شرعية مهمة خصوصا من يعيش في بلاد الكفر الاعتبار الأول فيما وضعوه من القوانين ونحن نتكلم عما ليس فيه معصية من الأمور التنظيمية أو المرور مثلا أو أوامر الشرطة أو غيرها ما يكون فيه مصلحة عامة الاعتبار الأول أنه لا ضرر ولا ضرار ولا تلقوا بأيديكم إلى التهلكة فلا يجوز للإنسان مثلا أن يأتي ويتجاوز إشارة المرور ويقول لا سمع ولا طاعة لأن فيه ماذا؟ تهلكة الاعتبار الثاني إظهار أخلاق الإسلام فينبغي على المسلم أن يكون قدوة في أخلاقه ولا يكون فوضوي ولا أخلاق ولا تعامل حسن بل يجعل الأخلاق هي قدوته ومن أعظم أساليب الدعوة إلى الإسلام إظهار الخلق الحسن الأمر الثالث أن الإسلام حرم الغدر والخيانة ولو مع الكافر فلا يجوز كما يفعل التكفيريون يقولون الكفار لا عصمة لمالهم ولا لدمهم يسفكون الدم الحرام يقتلون الأبرياء قد يأخذون الأموال يقولون الكفار لا مغيرة بن شعبة لما أسلم كان في سفر مع رجلين من الكفار ف أخذ أموالهما وأسلم ورجع إلى المدينة لما جاء إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال أما إسلامك فقبلناه وأما هذا المال فلا حاجة لنا به إنه جاء عن غدر وغير أمانة قبل أن يسلم وكذلك من الأمور المعتبرة في هذا الباب هو قاعدة الشرعية وهي درء المفاسد قدم على جلب المصالح فكل أمر يكون فيه مفسدة مما يخالف الأمور التنظيمية أو غيرها فلا ينبغي على الإنسان أو يجب على الإنسان أن يدرء المفاسد والأمر الخامس خامس هو أن المسلمون على شروطهم وهذا مكث وأخذ الإقامة على شروط معينة فما دام أن هذه الشروط لا تخالف الشرع ينبغي عليه التزامها وعموما ينبغي على المسلم أن يظهر بأحسن المظاهر وأفضل الأخلاق فالمسألة تحتف بها جوانب كثيرة وإن كان الحاكم كافرا وليس ولي أمر إن الله عز وجل يقول ولن يجعل الله الكافرين على مؤمنين سبيلا قال أهل العلم أي لا يكون لكافر ولاية على مسلم ولكن الاعتبارات الأخرى تبقى أما مذهب الخوارج هو الفوضى والدماء يقتلون الأبرياء والنساء والأطفال 
والمظاهرات وغيرها ويقول ليس ولي أمر وهم في بلاد المسلمين ولاة أمر مسلمين أيضا يفعلون مثل هذه الأشياء فلا تقف عند دماء الكفار نعم So what must also be borne in mind as it relates to this issue is that even if one is living in the lands of disbelief and or if one is living in the lands of disbelief or this is especially important excuse me for the one who lives in the lands of disbelief that the wali or the leader the one who is in charge of the affairs of the Muslim and this is in reference to the Muslim ruler and thus for the kufar for the non-muslim ruler there is no wilaya for him there's no leadership for him reality over the muslim however it is not permissible for the muslim to be a person of confusion and chaos and to be a person who seeks to cause demonstrations and uprisings simply on the basis of this person being a non-muslim and not being the ruler over them he says, rather, I mean, this principle, it comes along with a couple of, uh, a couple of, or in a couple of different regards. The first of them is that it is incumbent upon the Muslim to, uh, to adhere to, to adhere to those things that bring about a general benefit. Such as, for example, traffic laws that are set in place any uh, laws dealing with the authorities and the police and things of this matter he says so it's not permissible for the person to for example say that he's going to just speed down the street and not obey the traffic laws and he say okay there, there's no leadership for the for the car over me so I can disobey the traffic laws and the likes of this rather he must adhere to those everything that will bring about a, a organizational structure within within the community secondly that it is incumbent upon the Muslim to display the characteristics of Al-Islam. He must all, always display the good mannerisms and characteristics of the deen of Al-Islam, even in dealing with the non-Muslims. He says, and amongst the best means and methods of da'wah to Al-Islam is the good character of the Muslim. So he must always display upright mannerisms and character. Thirdly, that Islam prohibits deception and cheating even if in dealings with the kufar. He says, and so, it is not like the, tak the takfiris say or believe that as long as they are kufar, that I can deceive them, I can spill their blood, I can take their wealth, and there's nothing due upon me. Rather, it is incumbent upon us to always be upright and just in our dealings, even with the non-Muslims. He says, and Mugira ibn Shu'ba, when he initially embraced Islam, he was traveling along with two men. And these two men that he was traveling along with, he killed them and he took their wealth. And then he embraced Islam and went to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he brought their wealth that he had taken from them to the Messenger of Allah alayhi wa sallatu wasallam. And so he said to them, or he said to Mugira, he said that as for your Islam, then we're going to accept this from you. As for this wealth, we have no need for that. I mean, he was not going to accept the wealth from Mugira because it, it was, it was uh, acquired through ill-gotten gains. I mean, he had taken it from these people by force. And he had deceived them. And so he says, likewise, likewise, the fourth affair is this principle from the principles of Al-Islam that repelling that which is harm takes precedence over bringing about that which is beneficial. So therefore all of that which is corruption, all of that which is harmful, it is incumbent upon a Muslim to repel that and to do away with that and to not embark upon it. Fifthly, <laughs> Fifthly, that it is incumbent upon the Muslim to no? that the Muslims they are bound to their conditions which they 
Now they're bound to their conditions, which uh, they have agreed to. He says, and so any conditions which they have entered into and agreed upon, as long as they do not oppose the legislation that is incumbent upon them to adhere to those conditions that they have set. He says, and so these are some of the principles which must be borne in mind as it relates to this issue. And it is incumbent upon Now, he says, and, and he mentioned this ayah, the statement of Allah wa ta'ala, that Allah ta'ala, he has not given any wilaya or any guardianship uh, for the disbelievers over the believers. So in spite of this, يعني, it, is with, with, it is by way of these five uh, these five affairs. <laughs> now, and so he said that he mentioned as well uh, that he, uh, what the, the scholars of Tafsir say about this verse that this means no we lie, I mean no leadership. The, the, the disbelievers will not be leaders over the believers. He says, and so as for that which the Khawarij do from killing the people and, sh and shedding their blood and taking their wealth, and they say that there is no guardianship or leadership for these people over us, then this, no doubt, is, a, is, is falsehood. He says that even if they are even in the, in the lands of the Muslims, they do it as well. So it is even more so true uh, in this case. So as he mentioned that the Khawalas, they do the same thing even when they're living in the lands of the Muslims. So it's no surprise that, uh, that they do it to the non-Muslims.